Welcome back everybody. You are watching the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am making a video today for something that uh, I thought would be fun for us to do because uh, I often imagine many of you may be like myself, you're out somewhere and you see what looks like a sewing machine and you can, you know, you can't really do a, a, a lot of inspection but you think, well, I'll take a shot. And I, was, I had gone to a thrift store to make some donations, and I always go and look around, see what I can find. And I saw this sitting up on a shelf, and it is a sewing machine uh, case. And it says, as is, meaning that if there's any problems, it's, it's your problem. But it was $9.99. And I thought, oh, okay, what can you get for $9.99? And I thought, well, hmm. It would be nice to have a case and I had no idea what I was going to get and uh, briefly took the lid off and saw okay it's a white machine and then I had to hurry and get going and so I thought okay if if you know if nothing else I have a case it doesn't seem didn't seem to have any cracks in the base I thought okay I can always use that for a machine and so I thought it would be fun to have all of you kind of explore this with me okay so I don't know what I've got other than there's a there's a machine in here of some sort but uh, I haven't gone through looking so I'm you know imagining maybe some of you whether you're experienced at vintage machines or not that you're like oh you know what is it like to buy a machine and not really know what you're gonna get uh, to paraphrase Forrest Gump um, so Let's see, I have, one thing I did notice when I was carrying this home is that it has, uh, there are two latches. One of the latches will not clasp. And so um, we'll see if I can fix that or not. I have to figure out what's wrong with it first. But uh, without further ado, let's see what we have here. Uh, I'm gonna take this off, with the lid that is, get that off. The little claps, clasps. I can say that word today. All right. And, of course, obviously, I have it backwards because I wanted you all to see the, the $9.99 uh, label. On the front, the case says, Deluxe. And that's a pretty good uh, clue that you're dealing with a, a, a Japanese machine because the Japanese uh, almost, almost always use the word deluxe on their machines. They, I, I guess they were told it would impress people. Um, and maybe once upon a time, deluxe, which is a French word, by the way. Um, it, uh, maybe it did mean, mean something at one time. Uh, it means luxurious or of luxury. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, I'm going to kind of, you know, show all of you the machine as we go around the different angles. First of all, there's a cover. Thankfully, there are screws that can make it more easy, uh, more simple to remove, hopefully. Um, and what have we got over here? We have, that's interesting. <laughs> Look at the stop, uh, the clutch knob, the, the stop washer, the thing that you hold still when you're uh, wanting to disengage the drive shaft and the needle bar so you can wind a bobbin up top. I've never seen one with instructions on it. And let me turn it here and see what it says. Uh, I think you folks can read this from this from this magnification. It says to, um, to release, you turn it to the left. To tighten, you turn it to the right. Make certain to tighten before operating the machine. See instructions, uh, see instruction book. Uh, in the past, machines didn't have this. They had instruction books and you were expected to read the instruction book. Who knows, maybe by, I'm gonna try to date this machine. I, I don't have a database of model numbers for Morse, but I'm going to date it based on my past observations of machines and some of the, some of the features they had. Uh, okay, this is a, what's called a dual block. I think a dual cord or block outlet. Most of your Japanese made clones from the period have this and they, they're fairly straightforward. There's an, um, of course, there's an outlet for, I don't know which one I've got here right now. I think this might be the motor, but I, I have to go back underneath and check. But uh, no, apparently not. This is the light. Uh, and of course, it's marked light. It's not easy to see. Um, and then the other one will be marked motor. Uh, this is nothing new. Some of you have seen these before. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's move that cord out of the way. And 
I think I want to drop this down a little bit, see what we can see here. So if I zoom in again, you will see if it shows up for you, made in Japan, uh, sewing motor, and it says 0.6 amps, but up here it says 0.9 amps. So that's interesting. I guess these are decals, right? But I'll have to look and see if there's a plate on the motor when I get in there. And it passed inspection. Hooray. So it's nice to see people were inspecting the things they made back in the day. Uh, let's bring it around and you will see the name if I give you <clears throat> a little bit better perspective here. And it is a Morse. Uh, the Morse, of course, I've <laughs> the Morse, of course. I've talked about the Morse brand before. Morse was a distributorship of a very clever business set up to sell sewing machines, and they were trying to be an alternative to either Ken Morse at Sears or Singers. <clears throat> and they were not um, they were not one of the European brands. They were they literally went to Japan and said, Hey, we want to sell this. And the name Morse had been used in industrial applications in the past. Um, in any case, this is what the machine looks like, and it's kind of interesting. What do we have? We have, of course, stitch length control, and I haven't, like I say, I haven't experimented with this. I'm just basing this on my, I'm basing this on a guess. I'm going to go in and, and discover it, hopefully. This should be my uh, stitch width, you know, for zigzag that says, oh, we should have zigzag, and there's a little, um, little uh, lever button here that you use to lock that in. And then there's this, and uh, let's see, oh, well look at that. It swings up, and what do you see? Well, you see, I believe I see a cam in there, and it looks like, a, it says zero, and it's got a zigzag pattern. Now, I don't yet know, because I don't know much about this model yet, if this machine is, uh, if it requires a cam to do zigzag or not. Back in the day, they had so many different levels of features. You could get a straight stitch machine. You could get a multi-stitch machine with built-in cams. Those were more money, and they were more costly to manufacture, to be fair to the makers. Or they had another one where you could do zigzag, but you had to have a zigzag cam. And that was a savings in cost instead of having to put built-in metal cams. Um, and uh, so we'll see. But right now, that's what's in there. And if I zoom in, I have to zoom in because I don't know if this is showing up on camera. But look at this. It's got like a little rhinestone in the center. And there's a, some sort of red, there's a red indicator there. And it, it must have some purpose. It may have to do with where the cam is when you start decorative patterns. I don't know yet. Uh, what else have we got? I'll zoom back. Sorry about that. Uh, we have <clears throat> what I believe is going to be needle position, right, left, and middle, I'm assuming, just for the for the sake of argument right now. And these three symbols below are what? Those are, of course, for built-in buttonholes. Um, as the Japanese got better and better, or not better and better, but uh, they took more and more of the market share of sewing machines, uh, you began to see, let's see if I can get a hold of my foot pedal here. You began to see uh, more built-in features as we go forward. So my guess is this is not early 50s or even late 50s. I'm going to say this is probably like 1968, late 60s, right? And so far, I'm only seeing metal when I'm not counting the, the knobs, obviously. But I haven't looked inside yet, okay? So this is just a cursory glance, you know, like pretend we're at the, you know, maybe you're at the store and you get a chance to actually open it up and look at it, but you can't, you, know, you can't start taking it apart, right? But this is kind of the cursory look. What else do we have? We have, of course, our tension assembly. And remember, check your do look at your check spring. This is nice and bouncy. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it works fine. It should. What else have we got? Of course, we have our side door. We have a light bulb. By this point in time, uh, you don't have the bayonet style. You have threaded light bulbs. You can still buy these bulbs today. Whoops. Um, what else to say? Oh, uh, let's take a look at the um, foot pedal. Now this foot pedal looks just like uh, many foot pedals you find, uh, not Singers, but many other brands would use a foot pedal like this. And it's either carbon pile or it is rheostat. Now, I don't know if this will come up on the audio here, but let's try this. Um, I'm actually gonna put it in front of the microphone, see if that helps. 
Now there's squeaking you're hearing, but ignore that for a moment. I'm going to go really slow. Yeah, it's the squeaking is actually masking what I was trying to hear, which is um, the squeaking is just you know probably need a little oil on the hinge of the of the foot pedal. But um, because it is not super smooth, I can feel something uh, that sort of like a surface. Uh, it's, it's hard to describe with words here, but I can tell, I'm pretty sure that this is a rheostat, okay? Because carbon piles are very smooth. You don't really feel any, any surface, but of course, rheostats have an arm that sweeps across. Um, this, of course, should have a porcelain uh, uh, housing inside. Uh, what do we got on the bottom here? We have one, two, three, and one missing, but that's not a problem. These are old rubber feet that are surrounding what looks like some sort of rivet. Um, one's missing, but that's, I think I've shown before, you can take uh, some uh, good adhesive with a, um, like a little rubber washer from the plumbing, plumbing aisle in a hardware store. We can find something to, to, to fix that. Um, now, this is interesting. It says, made in Japan. This is another way to help you date a machine. When the Japanese first brought machines to North America, they uh, were still only producing their own electrical system, which is not the same as North America's. And so the machines, and I've mentioned this in other videos, they would ship the machines over, which were the bulk of the cost, and the head, which is the body of the machine, would be, would be brought over to North America. And then the motors and the electricals, like the uh, speed control, those were all sourced in uh, either the US or Canada. You will sometimes see it'll say Mercury. That was a big supplier, Atlas maybe, and there were others. But once you see made in Japan, this should tell us this is, this is a, you know, I don't think this is, again, it's not 1950s because a lot of these back, back in the 50s said made in USA, even though the head was made in Japan. This says made in Japan, and that's telling me this has got to be probably mid to late 60s. Um, what else? Uh, oh, look at this. This is interesting. I have only ever seen this on industrial machines or light industrials. It's the reverse lever. Seeing a reverse is not, not unusual at all for this time period. But look at this. Instead of a knob or a button, it's this, it's this lever here. And you see this in industrial machines probably because people are moving fast. And this is an ergonomic thing, right? It's, it's not a quality issue. It's more of an ergonomic friendly issue you just come over here and tap it's it's like a quick thing i have not seen one before so that's really interesting if any of you have let me know uh what else nothing surprising to notice that we have of course the ability to drop feed dogs the older the machine usually you will often see normal which is up for sewing or totally down which is for free motion or embroidery or darning they use the all three terms to refer to when the feed dogs are totally dropped and out of the way but as you move forward, they started to come up with a midpoint, right? This says nylon silk. So you want your feed dogs up, but you don't want them up so high. It's not like you're feeding denim. You want to be a little more gentle on the fabric. That's what that helps you with. And we have over here, this of course is the little obligatory, little, little, I call it the pinball flipper, but it's really just a little thing to help, help hold the machine still when you're sewing if it starts to vibrate. This will not hold your machine in the case if that, if that case is turned upside down. Do not kid yourself. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see if I can tilt it back. What's to see here? Oh, a couple of dust bunnies. Nothing really bad. What else have I got? Oh, model. Let's see, let's see if I can zoom back out because you can get more than a close-up of my wrist. It says model 6100. It's got a serial number. Refer to model number for parts. Well, that's long gone. But look at that. All, all metal. I don't know if it's steel or aluminum or an alloy, but some of it's clearly steel. Certainly the driving parts are. Sometimes you will see a little box like this. And this is actually for uh, the grease gears. They would put those little, uh, sometimes they'd have those little compartments there. But um, this is essentially what I'm just seeing. And again, it has a metal, metal hand wheel. That's nice to see. No needle in it, but that's fine. Um, I'm noticing that this nice little bed extension, which is here, but then you will also see that, uh, there's a hinge, but it's a little loose and I'm, 
I think I see one screw missing over here, but I'll simply take one of these out and go into my screw bin and see what I can find. So uh, this is part one of this <laughs> of this discovery, and uh, I think I'll 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 continue the video on, and we'll take a look at what else is left. Did did it come with anything? That's another thing you want to find out. You know, are there accessories with the machine? Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for the part two of this, when we'll start talking about the individual pieces and parts.